What's up? Hey, hey. guys. Hey, everybody. It is nine o'clock, and we want to thank you for joining us once again for Barry Share. Barry Share. What episode? What number, episode is this? Numero nueve. Number yeah. nine. Number nine. All right. Well, this is exciting. We've been doing a peacemaking series. Yeah. Really, a series on conflict resolution. Right. And we have haven't even had to get the boxing gloves out while we've Not been yet. on Facebook Live. Not yet. It's been. All after we got off. So. <laughs> or before we get on in some uh, cases. Uh, no. You guys, I don't know what it is about, like, when you have an opportunity to share about anything it is. If you're, like, sharing about marriage or you're sharing about parenting or you're sharing about peacemaking or conflict resolution. It's like, as soon as you get a chance to, to share, like, right before that happens, usually all hell breaks loose. Yeah, and there's, there's always a test. There's always a test, nice. so we've had our opportunity just to be tested, and we are excited about um, just coming to you today. We're going to be talking about peacemaking. We're going to be talking about, last week, we talked about peace breaking. We talked about how uh, people use um, assault, whether it's through their words or yeah. their actions. You have gossip, to, slander. Yep, to be yeah. able to um, kind of assault the other person in a in an argument or in a conflict. Yeah. Um, and we but, talked about how that was really rooted in fear. Right, yeah. Um, and and is someone trying to, to, you know, go on the offense and assault someone is actually trying to control, and right. control is always a cover-up for fear. Exactly. So if you find yourself, hey, Pepper Barry, how are you? Good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Uh, if you find yourself being a peace breaker, then do um, just ask yourself, you know, like, what am I trying to uh, cover up here? What fear am I trying to cover up here? Um, and then the week before, we talked about peace faking, That's being right. a peace faker. And that person is someone who is going to be more likely to deny that there's a problem. They're going to cover it up. They're going to sweep it under the rug. Um, and they're going to kind of run away from the opportunity to dive into conflict management, to dive into conflict right. resolution, because they don't want to rock the boat. Right. And right. so we did, we talked about four, um, the four things of the dysfunctional family. Four rules of a dysfunctional yeah. family. Don't talk, don't feel, don't rock the boat, and what's the last one? Don't trust. Don't trust. And so um, we talked about how... I can't believe we remembered those. I uh, know. We don't even have our list in front of us. So, um, But thanks for coming, <laughs> coming in strong like, on that like, one. Work, brain, work. Please, <laughs> please. So don't feel, don't trust, don't talk, and don't rock the boat. Yeah, and, and yeah. Um, you know, when you, when you grow up in a dysfunctional family, and, and to be honest, all of us grew up in a dysfunctional family, yeah. some sort of another, and all of us are raising kids in a dysfunctional family. Um, and so the difference is, is that now that we know what those things are, we need to work hard to uh, make our homes, make our families environments where everyone can talk, everyone can have feelings yeah. and share them openly. Everyone can really trust and trust is built in a loving, safe environment. And then people aren't afraid to like walk, it's not like walking on eggshells. Right. People aren't afraid to rock the boat with something that might be ugly inside of them. They are able to just let it all, let themselves be who they are and know that they are fully loved um, completely no matter what, what's and all. Right. So, and, and so what we've really talked about is, you know, the peace faking and the peace breaking are kind of like the ditches on the sides of the road. Yeah. And saying, okay, these are the things, these are practices that we want to avoid. We don't want to get in our flesh and either do fight or flight, right. we want to um, practice something that is really, um, I, I think the Holy Spirit has to get involved Absolutely. in order for, yeah. for true peacemaking to occur. And um, It you know, definitely can't be done on a regular basis, I don't think, without the Holy yeah. Spirit working yeah. inside of you. Because ultimately, forgiveness, um, like somebody's got to pay. Right. You know, and, and so the Holy Spirit can remind us that we have been forgiven much, mm -hmm. therefore we can right. forgive much. The debt has been paid. The debt has been paid, and it was paid by Jesus. On the cross. Uh, that's right. So so um, one of the things that, that 
you know, we've been talking about, you know, okay, we're going to try to avoid peace faking. We're going to try to avoid peace breaking. But, but you know what? One of the Bible verses that um, I remember um, um, our pastor at Redemption just preached the paint off the walls was, was a, a fence will come. Yeah, it's like going it, to happen. It's guaranteed. guaranteed. It's guaranteed. And so whether you're in a marriage, whether you're in a friendship, um, um, parenting, whether, yes, you're parenting, <laughs> guess what? Your, your kids are going to offend you. We tried to go on a bike ride tonight. I think I got offended like eight times by my kids. Um, have, are there any parents out there oh that have been offended by the whining of your kids, the disobedience of your kids, the the skating in front of a moving car <laughs> of your kids that may or it may does. not have happened less than an oh, hour. We ago. almost came home with yeah. one less kid. <laughs> I mean, I'm glad we didn't. But and so, what do you do in those moments when you have a conflict? Uh, and you need to go and be reconciled. You need to deal with it. You don't want to sweep it under the rug and not talk. Right. But, but, you, but you don't want to assault the person and just punch them in the face and call them an idiot and make them... Sometimes make, you do want to do that. Yeah, you, oh, if you're me. Some, sometimes. <laughs> yeah. But what does peacemaking look like? And so what we're, just in a few minutes, um, we just want to give you a few tools um, and a few thoughts to think about. Okay, how can I be a peacemaker? Jesus said... Uh, in the Sermon on the Mount, blessed are the peacemakers, yeah. for they shall be called the sons of God. The sons of God. And so at the end of the day, that reminds us of the first G of the four G's of peacemaking, which is that ultimately we've got to remember the why behind the what. Why, when I'm really mad at my daughter and I just want to, you know, just ream her out for, you know, almost killing herself, like... Why do I need to, you know, control thyself and, and actually practice some, some peacemaking because her disobedience offended me right. because I care so much about that. And we even talked about that, like, like hey, it's okay to be angry. Right. Anger actually proves that you care about something. Um, and, and it, but it just, in your anger, do not sin. So what does it look like to actually care about a relationship, be angry, um, and then have some have a, a, a healthy peacemaking experience. Mm-hmm. And so, number one, we we remember that it's all about glorifying God. Yeah, that's the whole reason why we do it. Because if we, as Christ followers, live like this, disjointed, without heart to heart connection, if Nicole and I live like this, our neighbors are going to recognize it. Right. And the light of Christ is not going to be able to shine to them like it can when we are together. That's right. And if I am separated from my kids and I don't have that heart-to-heart connection with my kids, like, like their friends are going to notice. They notice. Um, the people at church are going to notice. Like, like you just can't hide it when you're not living in reconciliation with the people that you're supposed to live in reconciliation with right, right. your family. Come on, people. Your in-laws. Um, like, it's real. Yeah, it It's is. real. And the enemy will try to come in and, what's it say? John 10, 10. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He so wants us mm-hmm. to destroy mm-hmm. each other, ourselves, and destroy, really, our witness. Right the light that's in us because he would so love to get us separated from each other and lobbing bombs at each other rather than doing the hard thing and coming together and being reconciled so that we can glorify God. Yeah. And so that's number number one is glorify God. Number two is get the log out because we've all, you know, what do they say? If be careful when you point a finger, because there's three more pointing back at you. Yeah. Um, it, it's true. I would say in every offense, there is at least something that if you would really go to God and say, like, what was my part in it? Mm-hmm. There's almost always something that he wants to show you about what your part in it. Mm-hmm. So even if it's um, that, you know, you're like, 
yelling at me or upset about, you know, me not parking the car in the right spot and the kids get it scratched up and, you know, and then I'm like, I can't believe you yelled at me about that. Da -da 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 -da. You know, if I can go back to, if I can go back to the Lord and just say, you know, well, he did tell me to park the car in this spot and I haven't been very good about getting, telling the kids not to ride their bikes around the cars and, and why am I really that offended? Like, why do I get so offended so easily? You know, there's so many different ways that, that if you could just take it to the Lord and say, like, God, get the log out of my eye. Show yeah. me my part. Yeah. Um, then He will. Yeah. He'll show it to you. I mean, and He'll help you. He'll help you get that log out. So. And a lot of times you'll be able to practice um, a verse in Proverbs 17 that says, "It's to a king's glory to overlook an offense." And so sometimes you don't even have to go to the person and have this heart to heart, this this conversation where you say that I forgive yous or you say, right. "Hey, you did something that offended me." Yeah, um, just get like over you it. just you can actually just bring your offense to the Lord and just get perspective and you can just settle it in your prayer closet. Yeah, um, and you overlook the offense and it's and it's really done. You've forgiven without having to have that. Somewhat icky, somewhat difficult yeah, conversation. It can be kind of icky and difficult sometimes. Now, if you can't overcome an offense, if you can't just overlook it, and you'll know because, well, you'll just know. You'll know because you'll want to talk about it. You'll want to gossip yeah, you'll about wanna it. You'll want to gossip. You'll, it'll, you'll it'll want to hurt them. You'll put a strain on your relationship. Yeah, if you'll you want to avoid them. Yeah, you may want to avoid them. We talked about the um, how to know if you've forgiven someone. Right. About two episodes back, maybe yeah, three. But, yeah, I'm afraid to try to rehash that. We won't that, rehash but, that. But you can go back out. and look at all of our um, all of our things are on our Facebook page at Barry Share, and also on our YouTube page, um, which is also called Barry Share. Just look it up. You can look at all of our last nine now, or I guess last eight. Mm -hmm. But um, eventually, you know, we'll be on episode like 273, and there'll be a whole plethora of great information. On YouTube and Dairy Share. So anyway, but what were we talking about? We were talking about peacemaking. And so we were saying <laughs> glorifying God and yeah. then get the log out. So what, what we really are talking about is the next step is go and be reconciled. Yeah. And for your information, number four is gently restore. And so I just want to put a little plug, and we'll talk about this in future mm -hmm. um, episodes, is... Reconciliation doesn't necessarily mean recon restoration. Right. And so if someone's really hurt you, the call is, is like forgiveness and you reconciling with that brother or sister is really not optional. For you to not take steps towards reconciliation with someone who either you have offended or that has offended you is to be living in disobedience. Right. Is to dim the light of Christ in your life. And so it's it's really something that our Father, who loves us and wants what's best for mm -hmm. us, is saying, hey, you reconciling um, with everybody in your life mm -hmm. is really what's best for you. And I'm not going to get let you just get away with just holding on to and harboring bitterness and unforgiveness right. in your life. But there's definitely some people... Who, even though you may have reconciled or attempted reconciliation right. multiple times, right. um, they just don't get it, right. or they just don't change, or they just right. don't stop hurting you. Right. And so, the gently restore part doesn't always have to happen that you're restoring a, a relationship. Sometimes, or it's that you're proper. restoring trust to where it used to be. Right. Sometimes, Sometimes you have to put those boundaries up, and you have to set. You have to set very strong boundaries mm -hmm. in order to be able to protect yourself and you know the rest of your family or whoever it is mm -hmm. um, from sometimes you are from the hurt that person is continuing to to pour on you. sometimes you're restoring a fence yeah that, that <laughs> restore the proper wall. restore restore the fence yeah. that is between you and that person that actually keeps that person from habitually hurting you yeah um, and we don't need to live you know, our lives behind walls, but there are some boundaries that, that are healthy boundaries. Um, and that we need to have. We need to be able to say yes, let your yes, yes, and we need to let be able to say no. Yeah, um, absolutely. And so that's a little bit of a, of a 
just something we want to throw in there is that reconciliation is different from restoration. Um, and so don't, don't hear that we're saying, hey, you've got to just act like what that person did to you doesn't matter or that it didn't happen and that you just need to trust them again. Like that's not what Jesus is asking you to do. Yeah. But what he is asking you to do is to, is to put love back on. Put love back on. I love it. And, and so how do you do that? Well, there are, there are a few steps, and, and it's actually um, it's right there in the pages of the Gospel of Matthew. In Matthew chapter 5 and in Matthew chapter 18, peacemaking is, is this. Once you, if, it, if you're actually having to go and be reconciled, um, then these are the steps. Okay, so, so th- now this is something where you cannot overlook the offense on your own. Right. And you're actually going to have to practice reconciliation. You're practicing peacemaking. Mm-hmm. And so the, the first step is reconciliation. Mm-hmm. You've got to go. You've got to go. You've, you've got, got to go. To, you've, got to, you've got to tell the other person what they did and how it made you feel. Right. And so you'll say something like this. Um, when you don't call and you're out late for work, it makes me feel insecure. It makes me feel fearful. It makes me feel really worried and anxious. Okay, and so what you're doing is you are putting um, their actions, you're correlating it to how it makes you feel. Um, They can never, ever... I can't argue argue with with how how I feel. how she feels. Actually, some people try to argue with how you feel, right. but your That's feelings right. are your feelings, okay? Right. They're just yours. Right. So if someone it, tries to argue with you, well, you shouldn't feel like that. You know what? It's real to you. Stick it. It's this real. is how I feel. <laughs> it's real to you. It's real. And, and so my perception is my reality. Yeah. Nicole's perception is her reality. And so, you know, maybe I'm working late. Maybe I'm doing something I'm deeming important. Um, but if I gave my word that I'd be home at 6.30 and it's 6.35 and she hasn't heard from me yet, then um, this is making her feel like I'm dead on the side of the road. Um, well, not at 6.35, but well, okay. <laughs> I give you but, a little bit of grace there. Uh, I mean, we live in a big city, you know, uh, there's, there's traffic. But, um, but no, I mean, if it's a habitual yeah. thing, and it's not, thankfully, because we had to have this reconciliation we talk early did. in our marriage because, yeah, right? Because... You really did have a problem have, with yeah, this. Right. And so I had to come and tell you how it made me feel. But once I did, then you were able to say, like, wow, I don't want to make my wife feel fearful right. and anxious and worried right. and scared. Like, so, so then you actually practice something that's called empathy. Mm-hmm. And you actually, before you respond and be like, well, when you do this, you make me feel like blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. We're going to deal with one issue at a time. Right. Okay, and so that's a huge rule in peacemaking. Is we're, we're going to deal with one issue, no issue at a time. Okay, and so I'm just doing this for I don't know our bilingual friends. <laughs> no issue. No issue. <laughs> it's Nueve. Yeah. That's just said Nueve. I'm tired. tired. Yeah. Um, uh, so what were we talking about? One issue at a time. One issue we at a time. We only talk about one issue. Okay. Yeah. And so. Um, <laughs> Totally lost my train of thought. Um, okay, you only talk about one so issue at a time, and then you em- empathize. You're able to empathize. Your perception is your reality, and then so so then I'd say, man, I don't like feeling insecure. I don't like feeling fearful. I don't like worrying whether something's happened to you. Right. And then say, and so there's a little bit of like like personalize it. Walk in their shoes for mm-hmm. a second, um, and then and then. Um, you want to say, well, you can actually have an opportunity to speak life and to really convey and reestablish love mm-hmm. for the person that you do, and say, say, I don't, I'm so sorry. Like, yeah. I, I never want to make you feel that way. Right. Um, and will you please forgive me? Okay. And so now that's. Let me just tell you. Will you please forgive me? How difficult Mm. are those words to say? Come on. Because what you're actually doing, when I'm not saying it's, and peacemaking is not, is not this. 
Sorry. Peacemaking is not saying, forgive me. Sorry is a statement about, I have sorrow. Mm -hmm. Okay? Forgive me is a command. Sorry, but you did this. Yeah. I hate those. Sorry, but. Sorry, but. Yeah. Let's take those sorry buts out of our life. Let's just take the sorry buts out of our life. Because seriously, yeah. when someone apologizes and they add a but to it, yeah. it totally negates their apology it anyway. It does. And so, you know, you have someone who says, you know, I'm sorry I'm late for the 50th time, but I had this really great conversation with such and such and just didn't end up finishing it on time. And it's just like, it's, basically yeah. what you're just if told you me say, is that that's more important than what, right. than being here on If time. you say, sorry, but, you are a sorry, but. You're a sorry, but. I mean, <laughs> that was really cheesy. Um, <laughs> but y'all can see that coming a mile away. But um, um, it's, that's huge. Yeah. To, to deal with one issue at a time, which means my, me offending Nicole is the issue. And I, we have to stay there, and we have to completely finish and wrap that up. Mm -hmm. Before we get on to anything else. Before we get else. on to anything else. Um, now, yeah. there, let's go on to the next part. Okay. Because we have, yeah. we can talk about more and more of that. Right. I think you guys might want to see it on a whole other time. So, the, here's, here's, the, here's, the next, here's the next part. The next part is negotiation. Yeah. Okay. Now... Negotiation is a little bit different from reconciliation. Reconciliation is the relationship, mm -hmm. okay? But negotiation is actually figuring out, okay, what are we going to do differently from here? Mm -hmm. And so, like, in, in this analogy, um, it's, it's to say, I'm sorry, will you please forgive me? Okay, that's sliding power across the table. Mm -hmm. You now have the power, and you can decide whether or not you're going to forgive me. Right. Um, and so and that, depending on how... A grievous the offense is yeah. how you, fresh you may not want to just say I forgive you right away yeah. sometimes you you know really need to take some time and and like we talked about in the past yeah. dig he, into what that makes you do or yeah. how that really affected you grieve that loss before you can forgive and we talked about that in the whole yeah. episode of forgiveness like holding the full weight right of it in your hand um, I, I remember a seminary professor said to me this, like, don't forgive until you're ready. And I thought, I thought he was like, I was like, that is. You Baptist boy couldn't handle that. I, I was like, no, you have to forgive. Forgiveness is a command. Yeah. I, you will yourself to, I forgive you. Right. And, which is just bull because. You know, there, there are some people, and I've heard this a lot in, um, I don't know if it's religious circles, and uh -huh. you know, because I didn't grow up in church, like I'm just, I didn't grow up in church, so I don't talk churchy people, but I know a few people who, you know, you do something, or I've done something to them, and they'll be like, well, I forgive you as soon as you did it. No, you didn't, because you've been acting like a fool since I did it. Yeah. <laughs> and so, but it's like, I feel like church has like made, especially religious circles yeah. not specifically any kind of denomination no. but people who are just have a religious spirit mm -hmm. to them have been taught you know we, we've that, been told we have to and so when people say i forgave you what they really meant is i went through the motions of saying the words i forgive you but i really don't know what forgiveness is i don't right. really i don't even have the tools to be able to hold the full weight of something uh and, right. and, and then really release it. And, and so please, you know, look back at, at the episode on forgiveness. Right. Um, there was some really some weighty things that have transformed our lives. Um, so negotiation is the part where you're talking about the stuff. The stuff, yeah. Of whatever the transaction was. Right. I mean, so it, what are we going to do from here, you know, in the, the analogy that we were talking about? Um, am I, you know what I mean? Like, like am, what's my new yes going to be? Right. Okay. Well, okay, honey, I, I hear you. Um, I, I want you to feel valued. I don't want you to be fearful. Um, how about if I know I'm going to be late that I call you before the time I said I was going to be home? 
Exactly. So if I said I was going to be home at 6.30, then, then I am going to call you at 6.20, 6.25, you know, so that yeah. we can, um, did you see somebody? Yeah. Here? Hey, John. Hey, Paula. What up? Hey, other John. <laughs> um, so um, in negotiation, I want to say this, and this is actually going to be a segue to us wrapping things up rather quickly, is in negotiation, there's a scripture that says, look not only after your own interests, but after the interests of others. Mm -hmm. And so, for instance, let's say um, you're mad, you're offended at your neighbor because their dog t keeps taking a crap in your yard. Okay, and let's say it just gets on your nerve. You've asked them to do, to, you know, to not let their dog over there, but it keeps happening. You're ticked off. Finally, you realize, man, I'm bitter at my neighbor. You go talk to them. You reconcile. You'd be like, man, I'm, you know, I've been offended, and like, but we need to deal with this. And so, like, please, you know, forgive me for being offended, you know, for for being offended, and and you have this whole reconciliation moment with them. Right. But once the reconciliation is happening, we're like, man, we're good, man, dap it up. You know, but then like, unless you do some negotiation, right. that dog is going to boo-boo right here in your <laughs> yard all over again. It's going to just so, bring it back up. So who's going to, who's going to pay for the fence? Um, right. Who's going to, you know, whatever, whatever the negotiation is. And so. How is that neighbor going to right. handle? Right. And so option A, so if I'm the neighbor, you know, that keeps getting my yard, you know, crapped in, then I might say, and, and let's say you're the other neighbor. Then I might say, well, I'll, my interest is your dog doesn't need to be taking a crap in my yard, so you're going to pay for the whole fence. Okay? No, I'm not. And you're... <laughs> hey, um, we're back. Okay, we're back. So, um, so my interest, let's say that's option A. Well, option B is, you know, let's say you grew up on a farm, you know, dogs go where they go. Yeah, they go where they and, go. And so you're like... Man, sorry, just let me know when, when he poops and I'll come and scoop it. Right. You know, and so that's option B, but like that does not take into consideration my interests at all. But me making you build a fence that you don't want to build is not taken into, you know. Right. And so, so you have to negotiate. This. So you negotiate, and, and usually you can find an option C. So maybe, maybe there is a, there's an underground fence maybe with the shock collar mm -hmm. or something, and maybe I'm willing to pay 25% of it or something like right. that. I mean, just, just, and so we're, we're trying to figure out a, a way to negotiate, mm -hmm. um, to look after, uh, you know, your interests, because you don't want a fence. Right, but, or maybe I'm willing to pay for a realtor to come look at your house and give you a good quote on what it could sell for. <laughs> <laughs> so, in the interest <laughs> of peacemaking and, and making, you know, um, um, all of, of those of you guys that, that are tuning in right now, um, happy, we want to look not only after our own interests, but after the interests of others, because y'all, there is a Panthers game on tonight. And so it's happening, right now. it's happening right now. And so we're just, we're honored that you guys are with us, but, um, but Hey, we want to go watch this and probably some of you guys do too, but, but, um, um, we also want to tell you there are some other steps. Um, we're not going to go into the nitty gritty of those steps, um, but if you, they, they are, I'll list them for you. If negotiation doesn't work with you, you then you need to take a next step and get some mediation. If peace is not coming mm -hmm. with two people, then go get your brother and take them with you. Go get a third party. Get a third party that's neutral. <laughs> a neutral party, yeah. Uh, it's like that's in Mac Christian brother. Brother, I know. I'm quoting scripture. I know, but I didn't want them to get so spiritual. I didn't want them to get confused and be like, if you bring your brother over no. to come talk to me about my dog crapping in your yard, it's not yeah. gonna work. So, yeah. get so a, a neutral a party. Neutral party. Go um, if you have a friend who's friends with both of you. If you have a pastor, um, if you have someone in the church who can help you out, that would be a great opportunity yeah. for you to take that to. Um, that person and say, hey, I want to bring this to you for the purpose of getting towards reconciliation with yep. this person, and um, and we need your help. We just need you to have this neutral ear, an unbiased opinion, and um, and help us get to a part where we can both come to an agreement on that and, and, and find forgiveness. And so there's mediation. 
There's also arbitration. arbitration, which is you actually are submitting to a binding decision by like some el from some elders in mm -hmm. the church, um, uh, and then finally accountability, um, uh, which is which is where if there's an unrepentant party, um, and then then that's actually when church discipline comes in. Yeah. Um, and and you know that needs to happen sometimes. Sometimes it does. Unfortunately, yeah. um, some there is such a thing as tough love. Absolutely. Um, so. And so. Um, anyway, so that's just, that's just some steps. You can learn a whole lot more about that and more at peacemaker.net, um, which is uh, really uh, a, a great resource. Uh, or you can check out the book, The Peacemaker by Ken Sand, which is where we've been pulling a lot of the material that we've been discussing tonight. Yeah. And we'll um, also have um, some blogs up on it at barryshare.com. We would love the opportunity to share this information that um, with your friends so if you would like to share this video on your Facebook wall or on your social media accounts we would be most appreciative and we look forward to seeing you guys again next Thursday at 9 p.m. All right. Have a great night. Thanks. I'll take care. Bye. Peace.